Look at your face. It's obvious. No wonder you got demoted. Every day, at my demotion destination, I get sarcastic comments from a female boss who is more than a decade younger than me. Having been demoted from the headquarters to a regional office, I was living a lackluster life. However, one day, an unbelievable project came from the headquarters, and my female boss faced an unexpected problem. The action I took while she was panicking was, My name is Mike, a divorced 53-year-old who was demoted. The sales office I was demoted to was in a more remote town than I expected. Public transportation mainly consisted of buses in a car-centric society. Some employees commute by bike, but for someone over 50, it's quite hard to ride through the countryside, so I commute by bus every morning for 30 minutes. Good morning. As I opened the door to the office, several employees had already arrived. We exchanged brief greetings as we headed to our desks. Aunt Mike, good morning. The one who greeted me a beat later was Daisy, my younger boss. Daisy is younger but competent and a very beautiful woman. Her name, Daisy, suits her beauty, but the problem is her personality. She has a somewhat harsh character, high pride, and is the type to bluntly say what she wants. She seems to either pity me or mocks me for being demoted at this age, making sarcastic comments almost daily. Whenever something happens, she sighs and says, Mike, you really are lackluster, commenting on my appearance or personality. Furthermore, upon learning I'm divorced, she'd say things like, no wonder you got divorced. There's no room to argue back, and not wanting to start any trouble, I just keep quiet and focus on my work. Well, I can somewhat understand Daisy's feelings. As someone in charge of the office, she would want competent subordinates, but here, everyone has been demoted from the headquarters. Either oddballs or employees who messed up at the headquarters. Dealing with such employees must be quite stressful for her. Daisy was always irritable, and that seemed to affect the overall atmosphere negatively. Then one day, our sales office was hit with a troublesome problem. It was more like it was pushed onto us by the headquarters. Daisy, having received a call from headquarters, was at a loss. Daisy, what's wrong? Got a call from headquarters. Seems like they're short-staffed. They specifically asked for you. I was surprised and ended up giving her a second look. If the New York headquarters were short-staffed, they should be able to call for help from a closer office. So why call from a remote place like ours? It turned out the call was about wanting her to join in entertaining an important client. Oh, an important client. Company A, right. I sighed, realizing what it was about. Company A is a major client for us, and Chris, the division manager, insists on having beautiful women accompany him at entertainments. Usually, a nice and pretty female employee from the headquarters would handle the entertaining, but she was out sick and couldn't come to work. With the entertainment scheduled for the day after tomorrow, Daisy was chosen as a substitute. It makes sense since Daisy is famously beautiful. I figured she would meet Chris's standards, but it meant she had to come all the way to New York just for this entertainment. The reason she was chosen probably also had to do with her being in a position difficult to decline. I don't know anything about New York. Daisy wasn't originally from New York, which added to her worries in a different sense. Maybe it's time for me, who grew up in New York and worked at the headquarters, to step in. While bracing for a possible scolding for meddling, I cautiously suggested an idea to Daisy. Hey, if you'd like, maybe I could come along with you. Huh? Rise, which seemed anxious, turned to me, and for a moment, they appeared to sparkle. But then, as usual, her brows froed with suspicion. What's this about? You find my trouble amusing. No, it's not like that. I carefully continued, trying not to hurt her pride. Well, 
Back at the headquarters, I had subordinates too. It's tough. Having only odd balls for subordinates, right? So, if it's okay with you, let me handle anything related to New York. This offer was made in hopes of improving the office atmosphere even slightly. Honestly, I'd be troubled if Daisy got any more upset, and I really didn't want her taking her stress out on me. Whether she knew how I felt or not, Daisy was silent for a moment before saying, All right, I'll leave it to you, and she called the headquarters. Then, on the day of the entertainment with Company A, Daisy and I boarded a plane and arrived safely in New York three hours later. We caught a taxi at the airport and arrived at the headquarters on schedule. The person in charge at the headquarters looked at me as if to say, Who are you? But with time pressing, we get started as planned. Thank you for being here today. Let's get right to it. The male employee in charge quickly finished his greetings and moved on to the main topic. However, Chris seemed to be in a bad mood, maybe because it wasn't the usual girl. But it was for our major client. We had to make the entertainment a success no matter what. I calmly looked over the situation. Daisy was here just because she's beautiful, so she wasn't familiar with all the project we were proposing. The male in charge was just moving things along without trying to improve Chris's mood. This was bad. Looking over, Daisy seemed to be panicking too. Even while receiving Chris's persistent gaze, she managed a forced smile, trying to find a way to break through. Then, I noticed something. Taking advantage of a pause in the conversation, I spoke up to Chris. By any chance, is that watch the one that was just released recently? It was quite a sudden change of subject, but Chris's eyes lit up as he rolled up his sleeve to show his watch. Ah, you recognized it. It's a custom model of the item released the other day. Impressive. I always think I should follow your lead, always being on a cutting edge, and it really suits you. Of course, it does. I breathed a sigh of relief as Chris seemed to be in a better mood. From there, we went off topic a bit but got into an engaging conversation about the watch. Eventually, the discussion went well, the contract continued, and the project was good to go as planned. Mike, I appreciate today. On the return flight, Daisy thanked me, and I was so surprised I couldn't immediately find the words to respond. It's nothing. If I was able to help, that's great. Let me know if there's anything like this again. When I said this, Daisy lowered her brows and smiled shyly. Sure, I will. I was a bit startled by her rare smile. Then, she went back to her usual expression, putting her hand to her chin as if thinking. But seriously, Mike, you were really good at talking and efficient. Who are you, exactly? Who I am? When I couldn't immediately respond to her sudden question, she asked me, why were you demoted? It was the first time she asked me that. Actually, back at the headquarters, I was on the fast track. People even speculated I'd be a future executive, a so-called elite. But then, a colleague named Harry complained to HR that he was being harassed by me, which completely derailed the career path I had envisioned. Of course, I wasn't harassing anyone, yet. There were incidents like his lunch being found in the trash and screws removed from his chair. Undeniable evidence of bullying. The other staffs believed Harry, and without solid proof, I was demoted. As soon as my wife found out about my demotion, she left me for another man. Her haste made me think she must have had someone on the side all along, which just added to my distress. The day before my demotion, I confronted Harry, saying, Look, it really wasn't me. I genuinely want him to understand that I harbor no ill will towards him. However, Harry's response crushed me. I know, but you see, you're just annoying. It was then I realized I had been set up by him. After I finished my story, Daisy looked at me with wide eyes and shock. After a brief silence, she apologized. I had no idea you went through all that. I'm sorry for how I've treated you. 
The next day at work, I immediately noticed a different atmosphere in the office. A palpable change. During the job briefing in the morning, Daisy said, let's all work hard to improve our performance. She had become kinder to everyone, including me, as if she was a completely different person. Mike, did something happen in New York? Well, no, nothing in particular. Others asked about her change, but I had no real explanation. She must have been inspired by the atmosphere at headquarters and decided to make a fresh start. Regardless, although there was some initial confusion, the office atmosphere improved day by day. This had to be a good thing. Mike, are you ready? Oh, yes, I'm on my way. Perhaps because of the incident in New York, I had gained her trust, and we started working closely together. I couldn't really understand it, but her newfound enthusiasm was somehow endearing, and I threw myself into work to support her, just as I had back at the headquarters. Maybe because the work environment had improved, our office's performance began to skyrocket. As our achievements grew, so did the unity and motivation among the staff. A few years later, our office finally became a top performing branch in the country and were supposed to receive an award from the headquarters for our achievements. There I was, on a plane to New York. Daisy was sitting next to me. Congratulations, Daisy, you'll definitely be able to work at the headquarters now. We had been summoned by the headquarters after achieving top performance. She was likely to be transferred to the headquarters next. While I felt sad to see her leave the office, I was happy to see our hard work pay off in this way. But Daisy just shook her head, indicating that didn't matter to her. No, it's you, Mike, who will be working at the headquarters. I've worked hard all this time to get you back there. Huh? I was so surprised that I froze. Did I hear her correctly? She worked hard for me to return to the headquarters. I looked at her, but all she did was give a small chuckle. Wow, what a beautiful smile. As I thought completely off topic, I put my hand on my temple. Come, what do you mean? After a brief silence, she whispered, that time, on the return flight, I noticed I liked you, oh. It's okay that we are just a boss and subordinate. I just wanted to do something for you. I wonder how I appeared to her as she murmured this to me. Come, do you have time after work today? She looked surprised at my sudden question, but quickly responded with a yes, of course. Though the air was a bit awkward, we made small talk until we arrived in New York. Upon reaching the headquarters, we ran into Harry in the lobby. I stopped in my tracks as he glared at us. It made sense. Thanks to our recent performance boost, I had managed to get a bit of revenge on him. Naturally, our branch being number one meant we outperformed the headquarters, and Harry was held responsible for this. Well, originally, that would have been my position. Rumor has it, his bonus was cut. Well, it's better than being demoted and getting a salary cut. I didn't want to talk to Harry, but it seemed we were headed to the same place, the president's office. Hey, Mike, did you say something to President Jones? No, I haven't said anything. Well, on our way to the president's office, Harry asked me in a low voice and then clicked his tongue in response. Harry seemed unsure why both of us were called in together. Excuse us. We said our greetings as we entered the president's office. Mr. Jones welcomed us with a smile, first praising Daisy and me, and then broached the subject of transferring back to the headquarters. But I was surprised not only that Daisy was mentioned for the transfer, but that I was included too. Harry looked shocked and blurted out. With all due respect, Mr. Jones, Daisy is one thing, but he has caused trouble at the headquarters. As Harry spoke, the smile disappeared from Mr. Jones's face. Trouble. What trouble was that again? Uh. The atmosphere turned tense. Harry seemed taken aback. 
Ignoring Harry, Mr. Jones turned to me and apologized. I wanted to apologize to you, Mike. I'm sorry. I was confused. Uh, Mr. Jones, you don't have to apologize. I know you're excellent. Daisy called me several times, asking me to investigate the harassment claims between you and Harry. If it turned out there was no harassment, we could confidently bring you back to the headquarters. Huh, Daisy did. I glanced at her, and she averted her gaze, looking a bit embarrassed. Mr. Jones continued. Upon further investigation, we found absolutely no evidence of any wrongdoing. It seems like HR dropped the ball here. Harry, who was harassing you? I wonder. Looking at Harry, he was pale and sweating profusely. It seems Mr. Jones had done a thorough investigation. The conclusion seemed to be that it might have been a case of self-sabotage by Harry. Harry was speechless. Harry, you've mishandled a valuable employee and caused significant losses to the company. You'll have to face the consequences. But... Harry was ordered to be dismissed but glared at me without offering an apology. Mr. Jones and Daisy sighed in disbelief. As I mentioned earlier, aside from the trouble with you, he's been causing trouble within the company. I later learned from Mr. Jones that there had been complaints about Harry's behavior towards his juniors. As a result, no one defended Harry, and everyone at the headquarters apologized to me, saying, sorry, for believing Harry over you. Later, Mr. Jones officially appointed me. He named me the Human Resources Director. I nodded and then requested, I have one favor, I'd like Daisy to join my department. Daisy was surprised, but Mr. Jones smiled warmly and nodded in agreement. On our way home, I took the opportunity to confess my feelings to Daisy. She blushed from ear to ear and muttered, it's just cold before responding with a hug instead of words. And I whispered in her ear, thanks to you, my life is back on track. I never thought I'd experience love like this at my age, but it's truly wonderful to be able to share life with someone. The next day, my first day back at the headquarters, I felt nervous. Despite being over 50, I felt like a new graduate. Taking a deep breath, I opened the door to my new department. It's okay, I'm not alone anymore. Good morning. I said with determination and was greeted by her familiar voice and smile in return. 